program is going to be intensive and really, really complex. We're at Ellis Camp. Start running this way. 
and gradually they get to the center. Which leads to a really confusing point because here they get big action, down here it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So down in the center, where they begin at a very high rank, then the guy starts doing cute little tricks and he forgets the really body dynamic actions that got him there. And it comes straight into the center. So Shotokan, for example, would come this way. And then of course being the Wado system, using Kazushi comes this way. And then of course the Shito system, or the more like the Goju, comes in pretty much this way. Now, this is sort of a complex thing and you should really understand this because this is part of our functional ideas. As we're moving here, for us, we don't see it either way. We think the journey should start from the outside, the big action, and come like this, proceeding to the arch this way. So you're constantly journeying through this type of thing. And so we could draw a line around here like this, and for purposes of a, uh, a just symbolic purposes, we could say that the sports sections lies out here, outside the sections of what we would consider Budo internally. This Budo internally is the important point. So we would start our training moving from, say, from the, from the big action here, and we bring down this kind of motion here. Now this action is called the uh, circle and point in the things. This action is called linear. We rank going this way. We cut ranking this way coming from here. A lot of the karate stuff starts with acute things and goes this way and downgrades. And we feel that's incorrect. If we have a Don Grade in Shotokan is from here, if we have a Don Grade in, in uh, Wado Roos from here, we have Don Grade in Goji Roos from here, and as you can see, these are, if you even turn one over here, then if you were using this as the baseline, then this would be the other Don Grade. If you use this as a baseline, for, uh, uh, then this is the other baseline here. So you keep moving around that way. And this is a uh, really kind of a mess. Now, furthermore, I'd like to indicate that, uh, uh, who races the board here? Girl, you got everything here but an eraser. <laughs> Doctor, you could be an eraser. Never thought you'd be an eraser, did you? <laughs> yeah. You're the messenger. Yes, sir. The <laughs> is that, uh, that uh, we have the four systems of the martial arts, and fundamentally they lay like this. And uh, this is the. Uh, we're going to encompass the whole thing because you know my rule of four and rule of three. The rule of four, I cut things and uh, I cut things uh, in the four pieces. The rule of three is the top, most, and least. So I'm moving like this, and I would have North China would be here, the South China would be here. Boats run in, in the south, and uh, horses in the north. And when they're combined with this stuff over here, you have uh, this over here would be known as Shuri. And this would be known as, uh, as in this characteristic, Naha. When they're combined with the, uh, with the Kawashi of the thing, it becomes known as Wadaru over here. And it combines with the, uh, uh, with the Kabuto of the day, it becomes known as Shitoru. So the thing is rightfully divided this way in the divisions. Now the problem is when people say that the, uh, the, the horses, uh, go to the Chinese went to Shure, and the, and the southern went to Naha, which is quite true. But Okinawa is sort of like, like this. Maybe I went down too far. And this would be Shuri and this would be Naha. And I both were in, both within the same city limits. Is that not true? So when you talk about Shuri and Okinawa, hi. Right. Talk about Shuri and Okinawa, the, uh, the Shuri is actually uh, uh, right on top of the other. It's not as far from here to Kaga Falls. It's not that far difference. So the two really became, then Tamari is brought it back down a little closer. So these became separated by kata. Not by style, but by kata. <clears throat> Very bad at drawing a picture of China. Let's say I'm drawing, this is China here. And this is the Korean Peninsula coming out like this, like a nose, if you will, and Japan lying over here. The But the, the emperor of China in about the year uh, zero lived over here. And he sent a general over to unify these, what they call the three kingdom area, it was like this, of uh, the Cheki, Koryo, and Sia. Now, Scythia, or the back of your mountains, lie over this area here. And they used to take steel from here, iron from here, 
to this place, <coughs> and uh, this is called the iron root. Can everybody see this? Can you see this? Yes, Are you looking at it? Yes, sir. How about you? Can you see it? I don't believe it. Let me see if you can see it. This is a, so this comes on the sword group, and these people are called the Tins people, and they later migrated down into Korea. But from here, the stuff went over into the, into the Fukuoka area and became, uh, and, and uh, these became the Korean people. Well, he sent me the great general, Kwan Mu, where we take our name from, and he sent him over to unify these three kingdoms. And these three kingdoms actually, at that time, were known as the K-A-R-A-K, -A -A if you Romanize it. But as we know, you can't say, uh, and this is strictly, uh, well, like for Shitoru, you can't say it without saying an I, so it's really Shitoru, not Shitoru. So it's really Kara, because when you end up A, you put a K out. So this is really the Kara. It became known as the Kara Kingdom, right over here. Now, this Kara Kingdom is also, you see, uh, really northeast China. And this, uh, we're doing it right or something. That's good. Northeast China was, um, was, was uh, for all practical purposes, is is uh, here. Now, the Chinese did, used, uh, they, didn't, they used the word karahan, of course, they used karate, but really, uh, what they used was, uh, they didn't use wushu, because nobody used that at that time. They, at this time, used the word huapap, which is called huapo, in this area, that's where they pronounce it huapo, or chuanfa, Or, as, as it was joined together, the stuff was called, uh, if you spent a whole lot of time, it was called Kung Fu. And Kung Fu is just a word for accomplishment, like the first man named Kung Fu was Confucius. Confucius Kung Fu. So, this area over here, and by the way, the Shaolin Temple is here, just down about here. And this great general that was sent to Kwan his head is entombed in this peninsula right here now. So this area in here all became known as the Kwampo or Kempo area. Kempo really is not the correct term for it. And Matoshi pretty much like to do that, but they don't really, uh, the, the name isn't really Kempo. It should be either Kwampop, uh, Chuanfar, or Kung Fu. And then Manchuria lying up in, in this area here. At the time of Genghis Khan, when he died and got so pissed off at the Zaya people that he had, uh, they were annihilated the race and they plowed it under and they were about down in here. And he completely did them in. And uh, their, that whole race ceased to exist. They plowed the ground and killed everybody. Dogs were killed everything in their life. just wiped that race out of existence. And they were part of the contributors to this, this group over here. Now, we, now, all this being said, there were techniques that began here. And they went into the temple, the real serious temples, and they were uh, studying here. And they were said to be brought, brought over to the Shaolin Institute. And uh, they were brought by this general Kwan. Uh, Guan Mu, or Guan Di, or Guan Di is the correct name, or Guan Yi is actually his name. And these uh, became known as Guan Pao techniques, and they have reached us in sort of a uh, haphazard manner, but they have reached us. And these old techniques went in here, and the oldest form we know is the Chung Huan, uh, Tang Su Chung Huan. They call it Tang Su because during the Tang Dynasty, it was, it was representative of all the emperors from that then, but they all did the form. And so you guys all know the Tang Su Chung Huan. And this was, became the characteristic of northern Chinese, which this was not southern Chinese, this is down towards India. Well, what happened with this uh, uh, about maybe a thousand years ago, this guy woke up and dreamt he was teaching, uh, uh, they'd been taught by the great emperor of, of Zhao, and so he was started teaching Kung Fu. And his type of Kung Fu became really, really developed, and it became either a, 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 the uh, Shang Fu or also the Shaolin, uh, type of the, uh, of the uh, Assembly of Kung Fu. Then about 300 years ago, they figured, well, when the guys from Okinawa, down wherever they were, came up into here and started studying more, and started bringing the kata back, this kata back over here, they decided that what they better do is to create their own kata. They did the, uh, the, the big frame, little frame, fast frame, short frame, and all that kind of stuff, and created the Kung Fu of the time. Now, all this being pretty rough, I'm pretty much I'm making a, a metaphor here in Noam, fairly accurate with the, uh, with the technique. All this time, we have a basic problem. And the problem is the, what are the fundamental techniques of our style? So when these generals, the first general, his name was Kong San, and which is San Sun Sun, to make any difference, uh, Kung. This is the, uh, it's pronounced Kong Sun Gun, and G-H-O-N in Korean, but Sun Sun Kong 
is the uh, major general that took his uh, formula, and he was the teacher, Sakagawa Todi, who you remember, hi, Michael, go to chair. And he was the gentleman, uh, Michael Gulen, uh, was a teacher of, uh, of uh, Todi Sakagawa, who again was a teacher of Lucy Matsumira, who was a teacher of uh, Aku Itosu, who was a teacher of uh, <coughs> Kanka Toyama, who was a teacher of Chole, uh, uh, In Byung Yoon, and the teacher of Charlie Park, who was my teacher. You see? What? <laughs> well, I'll write it back to the We'll go through that again. We'll go through that again. And we have, hi guys. So we'll run through this. Uh, here, we'll take care of them. So this is all running this way. Now, this comes, this, we have, of course, Sakagawa Todi, uh, which is, uh, we've been Chinese hand cut. Sakagawa. If my, my spelling's wrong, Jim, correct me. Sakagawa, I'm going to Sakagawa. Yeah, yeah, Bushin, what? Sakagawa. So is that right or an A? That's, that's you. Okay. Bushi Matsumura, or Soka Matsumura. Matsu. Matsumura. Uh, so Bushi Matsumura, we have uh, uh, Anko. Uh, Itosu. Itosu. I, I go from here, you know, I know this. Uh, Kankan Toyama. And uh, Chili Park. And the one that introduced me to this group was uh, uh, Ilji Kim and uh, Dong Ju Che. They're the ones that made the introduction to this. Now, this is the line also, right here at this uh, Anko Utosu, we also split off and say Funakoshi. And, uh, and his student, uh, uh, Rob Youngjek. And his student, uh, uh, well, both these guys are students, students of his, both these guys are students of his. This is pretty much lying, so I took my drag directly under him, actually. So I take my direct, uh, rank directly under student of Funakoshi Genshin. And over here, our rank comes from this. And from this area here, uh, I have Michio Koyasu and then uh, Jim Caldwell. Right from here. So we see we're very, very close cousin. But in any event, when the form started from here, they came down here three, four, five, and <clears throat> right at this place here, there was a real, this Konkan Toyama, there was a real connection. Because this Im Byung Yun was a boy that trained up in, in Manchuria. He went to Shanghai and then later came in and trained with Im Byung Yun. And he was a fundamentally a Kwapo stylist. And uh, he was a Chinese man. And since uh, Konkan Toyama so much admired the Chinese systems, were practicing it all the time, he and they in effect taught each other. And Im Byung Yun went back to Korea as a Shihan of a, of a, of a Shudokan and opened the gym there as a Shihan to Shudokan, all the time teaching, uh, of course, what he had uh, planned on teaching. Abu Tosu, this man here, uh, did the, the uh, Hian form, the piano. Piano, and that says, I'll use that expression, piano forms. And he did those kata, and uh, they passed down through Toyama and down in Byung Yun. And now, you know, a teacher can never make a kata without the connection with the students. Another one of real big problems. So this, these katas came with the connection of this guy and with the connection of this guy. These two were fundamental in the formation of, of the Hian forms, even though they, they didn't do it, but they were being senior students and things, they became very, very deeply involved in the development of those forms. So the forms that came down through Funakofi one way are different than the forms that came down from Toyama. They're not the same kata. Now what all this means to you is, uh, is, is complex. Because of this form that uh, this uh, Bushi, that the Santobi Sakagawa did for his teacher, Kong, San, Kung, we just call it Kung Sengu now, he did it in favor of his teacher, yeah, utilizing his teacher's techniques. This form, and the form that came from this guy, in his true form, 
<laughs> that came from this guy in his true form, the form called, and you know what it is, we have, we already said we have Chung, Chung, it's a, there's, I, I'll just spell it, uh, Chung Quan, Tang Su, Tang Su Chung Quan, and we have another Chung Quan, Chung Nat, form. There's one more, there's three of these. I know this form somewhat, but I don't really know it completely. And so I'm not going to teach it, but I will have Mr. Park come over and teach the form. And I'll either have that Mr. Pike, who's the head of the uh, uh, United States Taekwondo, he's up in Wisconsin or something, he'll come down and teach it too. And, and Chung Wan knows it, and so does uh, 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 Kim Su, and also Quan uh, uh, Ray. They all know that form, I don't know it real well. But the characteristics of these two forms, this form here, and this form here formed the Heian Forest. And they're really not very damn philosophical. There's always a philosophy of, of fighting. There's always a philosophy. But these encompass the old philosophy you don't hear in the martial arts. So the techniques that, uh, I'll pat your hair and pop up here. If, if he's uh, over here, if he's moving forward this way, and he uh, he punches for me, punch. Let's do his rotate one. See those techniques like that are directly of our mechanism, are part of the Heian kata. They're part of the. They belong in the Heian floor, and this belongs in the country uh, of Chang Hua. Uh, Michael, sir. So it's like this if you're doing key on one. Everybody does key on one this way. They go like this. One, two. But in truth, if he's punching for me here, and he's punching from here, one, punch again. We block with our elbows. A boxer, Chinese boxers too, they hold their hands here, and they don't move their hands. The elbows move. See? Now you're blocking here. One, two. But we say, and when you put it in its full context, it's like this. One, one, now you can hit me hard. Okay. See, I'll touch this time. Now the action, see what it is? And it's a really violent block. So these actions are flinching the eyes, much like when I showed you before, and I sit here, here this way, bring whatever. Okay. Like that are so evident within the Chung Kwan forms. You know, form one, two, like they start up the hands this way. That in the real serious thing, they're carried forward into this, uh, into the Pianon forms. They're part of the Pianon forms because of the roots. They're not taught because they're too damn dangerous and they're really not right. And furthermore, they don't fulfill the quality of starting with the defense and ending with the defense. And then they demand another quality that's not put into martial arts, and that's the quality of speed. Now, I've showed you guys a hundred times this stroke. Have I not? Well, one of you bright guys get up and tell me what it means. I'm waiting for anybody to show me the technique of what it's for. Well, it's actually like this. That's actually what it's for. Now tell me what that technique is for. The answer we're at a symposium. To understand that type of thing. In the first place, David, if David comes up and punches for me really hard with that hand, punch. I, he can't come through the block. I'm using a natural block in my arm, right? Again. See, just a natural block. So there's certain natural actions that work well with the body. So when I'm doing any kind of form, I never use muscle, I just use this kind of action. It's very simple action. Secondly, is when I'm using a makawar, who has not used a makawar here? Has anybody here not used a makawar? Let's go down to the makawar. Right? Kawar. I see everybody come up and hit the makawar. Now, just normally. David, show me how normal people hit the makawar. Normal people hit Yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it's not, it's just like <laughs> no, like what? Which is, that is, good, of course, completely wrong, is it not? Right. In the first place, that stresses the elbow really bad. It doesn't build the big knuckles. It doesn't do anything that you might want it to do. The macro supposedly is to make more calcium in the bones, strengthen the arm, 
directly to the shoulder. It's not designed to shock the shoulder all the time or to shock the elbow or this. As a matter of fact, punching in air is not good for that all the time if indeed you punch against your muscle resistance. You, if, you're contra if you're going out, you can't be pulling back simultaneously. And the punches are so fast that if I'm punching, I have to literally stop it before it starts. And that puts an enormous stress in the elbow. So actually, the correct way, you just come out lightly and one, just like this. All you want to do is groove the muscle action. Real, real slow like that. Just no, no power at all, just like this. And Ben, why don't you shoot? You're new to our group. Come on over and just show me real light, just stroke it real nice and lightly with a month four. This is Ben DeLeon from uh, Wisconsin. Now just maybe you gotta relax. Okay, watch. Watch my body. Ben over here. Watch. Okay. I'm not hitting it hard. I'm just grooving the technique. You understand this? Do it about five, six times. With the accent on being just no muscles at all. Fine, that's good. Now, by the way, come up, let's see how you do it. Ready? By the way, David's a Pan American champion, uh, champion, all that kind of stuff. Okay, now, the correct way then, then for the hand, how good Lord is. Grind it in. I've seen that about 15 times. So, you hold your hand within one inch, one inch away, and just twist it completely all the way over. Closer. Hold your hand closer. Closer. Again. Closer. Grind it. Hit it straight and grind it. Closer. Keep your hand closer. Closer. Okay. Now, David. Sir. from here. Like that over and over and over. And this is what builds the big knuckles and strengthens the hand. This is what improves the technique. All mock warriors are hit that way. They're never hit with force. Right? Ever. <coughs> you see, the first place you want to develop the hand strength, you want to groove the technique, and you want to get power. So we can do it this way. One, two. Let's try it. Remember, this is turning over, and you can't be going this way, because that isn't the way we block. It's just like this. You watch one, two. Remember we're doing this? Watch my hand. Same the other way. One, one, two. David punch it for me. <laughs> the same thing, right? Hey. This is, uh, okay. When you guys go on demonstrating this, lower your hand as fast as you can at the other person as fast as you can. Generally, people are very, very slow and have very, very slow reflexes. They come really slow and they can't move. And so you stand up where you are again. And let's try this. We're going to be good around if you don't hurt anything. Okay, like this. One. Just like just ten punch. Okay, now watch. Who, who's going to be my guilty person this time? Come on, David. You, you can sit down. I'll bring somebody else up. Watch. You can sit down. Now watch. We'll sit down. We're going to do this later. Hey, David. One. I should be able to do that with no trouble, right? Eight. Watch. One. Every time a different film. Why not? Everybody can do it, right? Everybody. But if you're not letting loose of your muscles and you keep tightness, in the action, you're not going to get this. It's necessary. You won't be able to move. Okay. You'll actually, when your chest comes, this muscle will actually tighten, and you can't get your arm beyond it. You see? Now get up and try it yourself. All right. Now watch him. He's doing really well. Now can you now identify what his problem is here? Try it. Do it again. <laughs> I'm going like this, right? And I'm talking to you when I'm doing this. That means I'm not holding my breath, right? Hey. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, let's see if you want to keep a conversation about it. Fuck, we don't want to say it. See, you can't be holding your breath. You can't violate some little, little punch, little arch of arch. So you're punching, I guess, one, two, it doesn't make any difference what you're doing. My hand is one. See, I got to have this speed. And if I do, my, I'll lift again. I turn around and he on one. He reaches for me. He reaches for me to punch my hand. Punch. The punch. Again. Again. See, now that I'm hitting this time. See, but this is the idea when in that form. Point two. Right? Three. So these are cute little tricks found within this following our line. Now these also follow the steady principle of the martial arts for us, the principle of a bad exchange, right? If you really want to fight and win, there's three principles to hold to for us, right? The first is what? Sudden, a surprise. Absolute surprise, isn't it? The second is suddenness or quickness. And the third is viciousness or violence of the attack. Those three elements have to be there. Speed is a relative thing. Now you know what force is. Force is uh, what? Mass times velocity, right? I think it was MA, right? Acceleration. Right? Acceleration. Yeah, what? Acceleration. That's what I said. Acceleration. Did I say velocity? Yes. Yeah. I was thinking velocity was wrong, not acceleration. I said, I think it was MA, and it doesn't, A doesn't equal velocity. <laughs> but, uh, see, now, this is an interesting concept because within these Kanka techniques, you have, again, to prepare your fingers so that when you hit, you really, really hit. You got to keep loose and smack. That's why the Keto Federation, all the Federation, they use the backhand techniques. And the backhand techniques become really, really violent. This is really fast and really violent. So that being said, that uh, there's another basic principle in martial arts to go with this, and that's don't put two hands on somebody when they got one hand free. You don't want to be doing that. Now, how do you develop speed? It's necessary. But the acceleration is necessary to develop mass. How do you do that? How can you get so one finger is more massive than the entire fist? How do you go about that? And the way is to make sure the antagonist muscles aren't tightening when you start the action and you're losing at the final point of the action. Now, if you don't know what those muscles are, the point of doing karate is so you can uh, feel that and so you can learn that kind of an action. It's very difficult to learn if you don't have the capacity to learn. But part of the initial mind-numbing repetitions of ordinary karate are preparing you for learning. You see, over and over and over again, what you're doing is strengthening the body, and you change the body structure. So what we're going to try to do today, and it's the time we have, is to drop into the basic Kiao forms and look at the gym and the speed uh, complex and see how they work. And then we'll probably repeat part of this tomorrow because I want to go through these forms again. And uh, see if we can uh, understand what it means to have velocity in the strikes and what is to have meaningful strikes. Uh, just hitting somebody in the chest sometimes does good, but this is really fast stuff. Now this all comes from the basis of our style. The rupturing of these techniques is called jujitsu. Okay, now we're about ready to move on. Any questions? Yes. You have a question? You have a question? You scratch your head up. Well, you've got a question about any of this, you should ask me, yes. The last one, Yeah, well, it means that if you, the guy starts the technique, and you can uh, break it into something that's not supposed to be. For example, if I start a technique and somebody grabs me uh, by the hand and starts throwing me, then the technique I was doing doesn't carry through and I go into something else. Unfortunately for jujitsu and other things, when you make a commitment, you almost have to carry it through. And that's a real danger of karate is because you can be fickle, really fickle, and if you read resistance, you can change. In some forms of sport judo, that's entirely true, too. But in jujitsu, you can't. Jujitsu teaches the blind uh, uh, going through until you're finished with the technique. In other words, anything you leave with your shoulders and with your knees and things like that, if you carry completely through, it's, uh, uh, you, you can't get out of it. If you start moving the shoulder, the shoulders shoulder can help move. You can't redirect the shoulder very, very easily. Statement you made with the finger and the antagonistic muscle, would you restate that? 
Well, yeah, exactly. If I'm, if I'm going to punch, you make a closed fist, feel your forearm muscles. Aren't those the same muscles that make you, allow you to curl all weight? So if you want to uh, extend the arm, it doesn't make really a lot of sense to bring the arm in on a curl. And a lot of times, for example, when you're kicking and your legs are funny, you'll pull the, uh, you pull the back of your leg on this if you're not, uh, if you haven't warmed up properly. Guys will do a fast kick and say, I pulled my leg. And that's because the muscles haven't been taught to shut down correctly. Right? Remember, in karate, we don't always have a chance to warm up in the application. We don't warm up. Uh, we don't have, we may be when we're hungry, we're not feeling good, we're called upon to perform whenever the situation occurs, not when we're ready. And so the techniques must be different. We must uh, have a higher level of technique at the higher stages where we can do it anytime, any place, whether we're ready or not. Remember, the thing coming ready or not, that's sort of the, uh, so remember that one. How about you, the back there? You? Ask if you got a meaningful question to ask, because this is, yes. Okay, how about you guys, anything? Jim, no question? No, no, no. David? Yes. No, no. Okay, you got I'm looking for feedback for teaching here. Okay, so you should be trying to think of something because you don't know what we're, what we're talking about. Okay? Uh, one, one quick question. Uh, we're using uh, Ping Yanan, Heian, and, and Pinan. Uh, which of those uh, do you want to? I, I prefer the Pinan forms. P Pinan? Yeah, you can say Pinan, but they're called Pinan forms. Uh, they, they both sound about the same, like this, uh, Chanan is Chanan. You can just say Chanan, Chanan, Chanquan, Chanan. Doesn't make any difference. You can use Chanan or Chanan, whichever you prefer. They're all the same thing. In the influence of the uh, Pinan form, um, the Chanan or the Chanan, the Kongsun Boon, does the um, Chanquan Tong Su come into uh, indirect play there? Yeah, it comes into indirect play, but the problem is that in the and at present day application, all meaning has been lost. Those forms now become just simply kind of a junior kind of, they're really not good for anything. Except what we're doing, and you wouldn't want to teach this to anybody. Who would you want to teach this stuff to? Yeah. Sir, you mentioned the two different uh, variations or influences uh, from Tung uh, Koshi versus the uh, uh, was a little different initially. Yeah. Do you want to do so will you be able to? Yeah, Tung Koshi did not. I <coughs> believe just straightforward technique. This is a defense, and this is a little defense. I just believe that's straightforward. And where you have the, uh, <coughs> what's his name, uh, uh, Toyama, believed in a much more loose action. For example, the, the way the hands are moved rather than the short, uh, that kind of an action. The difference in the hands. One's more Chinese and one that brings in more of the possibilities of jujitsu uh, ju uh, or, or throwing type techniques or techniques that used to use uh, to Kazushi. I did have a question. It goes back to your circle diagrams where you're mixing the, uh, the karate. Mixing the metaphors up. Uh, the Jiu Jitsu and Aikido, uh, where's Chinese martial arts fit in with that? Well, they're all Chinese martial arts. That's why they, they can't be separated. Any more than the English language can be separated from England. And we don't speak English, but we do speak English. You know, it's the same thing. We can't separate. Actually, the real separation from China is more uh, is less in time than the separation of English from English. American English from English. So, so as you say, we're both English. I don't see what, you know. Go. Yeah. No questions? Do you have any? Yes, sir. Um, going back to the techniques, the techniques you're using the the upper body, the, where does the hip does the hip play a part in? Yeah, the hip does of course because the hip is up, as we'll show later when we get through the exercises. The hips are like a, like the boat and uh, uh, of the which the guns are. Attached. You move the hips around like this to where you're in position. You can either shoot the guns or displace the person the ground, essentially. So if I'm moving quickly with the hip, my guns are here, my hips are my boat. I'm moving, moving this way with my hands. Then if I'm moving in quickly the hip, and I'm bumping, I can do all kinds of secondary techniques with my hips. For example, David, come on. Just do a punch. Just right from there. Just that and do a second punch. In this case here, that's Kawashi, isn't it? In this case, it's Kazushi. And the, both of them are illustrated by both the hip movements. Both of those things identical, see? So this idea of the Kazushi, and uh, they're all connected with the hips. Actually, for really violent fighting, the hips really don't have much to do with it. Uh, I, it's, uh, you need, for a really injury, you have to have a high velocity. Now, I know that people disagree with that. If I had a gun, and somebody attached me, I can whack them on the head with a gun butt and really knock them cold and cause a lot of trouble. Isn't that right? right. But it's better to shoot them. <laughs> to 
same thing here with a fist. Better to pop them with a fist than is to bother to whack them with your hips or turn around grappling. The trouble with, uh, with the grappling techniques in this type of situation, they can't fight in a whole lot of people and you can't detach fast enough. And sometimes if you're in a lot of places, you tear your clothes up and ruin everything really bad. I don't like to go to the ground if I'm really having a serious fight. I'll do it sometimes. And one of them, if you're a real serious fight in an alley, it's always good to go to the ground and go behind the garbage cans and they can't find you. <laughs> but I mean, that's a, outside of that, it doesn't work. Okay, let's get up and uh, move the chairs out. That's a really basic technique. And we know if he drops again, you pin it right on. And we know furthermore, he drops it and my body's prepared to hit. Again, we, we go all those kind of animals. We're not going to worry about that. What I am going to worry about is I'm standing here, he's not going to drop. My hands are up. And I want this kind of an action. I want the hand coming in here and reflexing it up. So that eventually it's you see. But now this has to be complete. And this has to come up. The technique. I know it's complete, because if it wasn't, I wouldn't hit with the first one, would I? You want? You want? So what I'm going to do is stand here like this, relax, and, and see how hard I can get it. Uh, quick I can make it. Relax. In my mindset every time, one, two. And I'm going to make sure my body is set in my best punch. One. Okay, and I want you to hit harder than that, but I want to real quick. Hey, hey. Okay. Real quick. Okay, real quick. Right? I don't need repetitions. What I want to do is get every bit of my body, touch as much as I can. I'm not holding my breath. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
starts this way. One, one, two. Now the action's like this, this is the way it comes. Mike, you're over here. And you're over here. Now, I'm standing. He approaches me from here. He approaches me from here. Are you ready for that? He approaches me. Okay. One, two. This is strictly boom. I'm going. I, last time I broke my fingers on somebody's iron kneecap. <laughs> Take it closer, so I moves. One, two, three, two. Both those are fast, and they're real fast. Okay, do that much. <laughs> These have to be fast, real fast. Watch. Watch. Right. Right. That isn't what I did. Watch. Come here. You're over there. You're over here. Yeah, so he comes. You're right over there, coming in this way. I use jig on that hand. Hi. Hi. Jim, and you're right there. You're over here. Hi, Doctor. I'm standing here. He approaches me. This is there. One, two. Both these are fat. One, this is fat. These are fat. There's no reason they have to be together. One, two. They're not together. They're not designed to be together. They pop. They pop. That first strike has to be fast. Both individuals are under it. Yeah, they're not loading. Hey, there's two things there. They're not together. This is not a loading fan punch. This is like this. See? He walks in. Boom. Boom. That's what that is. You're whacking, you're popping him. Then you pop the next guy. Right. The thing is, it is not a low defense punch. Forget about that crap. Right. Go. Okay, go no, neither one of those are fast. Make it fast and make the first one fast. That's better. Can you see the difference? Okay. Do it again. What's the difference between that and the first thing? It's an act of will to get the speed up. Right. If you don't have the possess the metal powers, to get that speed up, it won't be up there. Hey. You cannot be, accept some half-ass attitude on your part. You have to really concentrate and commit. 
That's the reason why this technique has all the elements of chemistry. Folks, the mind, the weapon, and the hand. Even this stuff, see? There still is a heart. This is still both have elements of chemistry. When I'm hitting him, I'm really hitting him. Right? But I don't have to beat his body, you know? Okay, go ahead. If you can, work on a Michael Orr more. <laughs> See, don't get blood blisters. Don't get blood blisters on your own hand. You're supposed to hit people. That's the reason for the hand training. But don't get these. Come here to the other part of the park. And I'm from here, around here, when I turn around, David reaches for me with the left hand. I'm on the right hand. Well, I hit this way. It could be any way he likes. Then he punches, and I jam it with my elbow. Let's do that a couple times with the elbow. He punches. One, two. Now, this time, I'm going to bring my hand around, and I'm going to crack him right across the eyes. Watch. One, one. See? Faster. 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 So I'm turning from here, and he attacks me. That's where I'm hitting. And this no, is still that way. He loves it, right? One, one, two, like that. Then, left hand kiss equally fast. So turning from here, one, two, three. Make sure this is fast. One, two, fast. Now, these, these tummy tapping techniques have been known to make people lose weight on their stomach. Good for weight loss down here. Thank you. I hope you don't mind this. Uh, Jonesy, please, if you're attacking, and do a normal, do it this way because we're videoing. You're attacking, right. he's going to do a high defense. All right. <coughs> no, it's right there from classic. All right. All right. OK, but watch my action. Right. You punch me. No, just wait. All right. Classic position. Step back. All right. Hit. See the difference? Right. I'm doing a high knee cut. One, one. See, right from here. <coughs> now, this means that at this time, you're going to do a high knee cut and you're going to punch low. I'm going to punch one. You're going to punch high and then punch low. <coughs> you see, punch again. <coughs> now punch fast. <coughs> Which is when I was uh, one of the professional boxers, uh, it was the heavyweight champ, actually. There was at one time, we were a closer runner up. He punched me like this. He punched me like this. I went bam, he punched me, and I caught the hand like this. Now watch it again. <coughs> See? My body is relaxed. Now I'm not going to put my hand here. My hand's going to be here. Because from here, I don't have certain kinds of techniques available to me. So from here, where I'm going to be blocking, once <coughs> more, one, two. You see the block? Okay. All right, let's do it again. <coughs> Punch. All right. You see this technique? I'm down blocking, so let's work. <coughs> One, two. Right. Okay. Now, I don't want you to do that. Don't punch. I want you to try this one. <coughs> Jam it. One with your elbow. Don't punch. And then I want this one fast. <coughs> I want it really fast. Right. Okay, go ahead. Right. <coughs> Watch. Not, there's nothing wrong with it. Let's see what makes it better. Go. Okay, that's fine. But I can see no reason at all when David would attack me slowly. 
I bring my hand to here. When I'm in this position, prior to punching, my hand should be here. The chamber's at the side, not behind you. One, two. The hand should not be drawn to the back. So correctly, the tech would be better this way. One, one, two. It'd be better held here. Tack right. That should be held at the side, not pulled back. So the differences on technique are this hand, what would you think back here? See, this is habit for the shoulders and the rhomboids. This is ready for technique. So when I'm blocking one, the hand should be held here, not back here. Now, this does conflict with some kinds of form, but not with this. I, I'm sure beating this form to death, aren't we now? Or beating you, I don't know. So, the next point of the form, we turn around and we go one, two, don't we? Or we do this way. I would just throw out hand one. One, two. No, we do this way. No, it's the point We're going to the front, sir. Oh, it's, what did we do? The front, sir. What did we do? One. Oh, yeah, we do the front. Yeah, we do the Cut that out. I can't make mistakes like that. Okay, right here. I'm thinking about something, okay? He's going to go one, two, three. Now, you know the classic argument is that he, he punches. And I catch it from here. I step in here, one, two, and then I drop it. Now, you know, I disabled Julius Theory's arm like that for about three days. We were arguing about this, but that isn't what we want to do. The technique is much more complex than that. I'm standing here. He punches for me. I slap him one, two. Ice. Watch again. I'm standing here. He attacks. Hey. One, one. Yes. There's a whole form, see? One, two, three, four. Just like that. Watch the hands again. You got it? We got it better, Jim? You want me to hold Yes, please. <laughs> I'm standing here like this. I'm just going to form. He reaches for me and what he wants to. Sorry. Now, come here. Again, do one same thing from here. One, one. You see the action? It's pretty, pretty easy, isn't it, for you? Okay, one. Now this is repeated constantly. Again, one. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Light. There are no slow techniques in here. If you have to go through it to figure out what I did, go through it in your mind. I will not permit a slow technique on the floor. From now on, if I walk around and I see you going like this trying to figure out what it is, I will sit you down until that drill's over. You must go through it in your mind. Okay. Go. And I'm going to do it with vigor and go draw less more. We got it? With vigor. Yep. <laughs> I can see you again. <laughs> Watch. This is real simple. Come here, Bajor. He stands this way. He grabs a hold of me. Anyway, two hands. I make a different one, two. Now, nobody can stand it. You just can't stand it. I hit guys like that, but I saw blood trickling down their teeth. Really serious people. You know, my friend that used to practice with. And so this idea of just whack, that's a ferocious animal. The whole, uh, there's a main strike of all the keto people. And if you remember, when Insan So was here, he did Kong Sukun, he used this exclusively this way. Not shoot, not this, this one, back of the hand. I know, I had bruises all up and down my hand from hitting. You gotta prepare yourself for that, of course. But this is really, it's violent technique. That's a whack, whack, whack. And I'm not hitting him too hard, I'm really not. And nobody's ever been hurt from this in here. We've done this over and over again. But it is a violent technique. It's surprising. It is quick. And it is violent. If you have big rings on your finger, this is terrible. Like that big gold one-ounce ring I had, I whack you with that, you have a lump like, a, like you've been hit with a golf ball. Or at least looks like a golf ball. <laughs> the lump. That's it. <laughs> OK, go. Watch his right hand drag. Watch. Okay, now watch me. And my hands are here. Watch again. 
<clears throat> my hand is here. <clears throat> See, I don't have to bring it from back here. Okay. So when I hit here, my hand is from here. Okay, boom, boom. Let's try it again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, one, two. Oh, yeah, fair. Watch, you can definitely watch. You, know, no, right. you didn't expect that, do you? What's that? You go, what, boom, you see? It's fair enough. Like this, like, what, boom. Just like, what, boom, like that. Not, what, and then boom, boom. It's what, boom, that. Right. Not, what, boom, back. It's what, boom, back. And try it again. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Not boom, boom, boom. There's a difference. One, two, three. No, you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be like this. One. See? The rhythm. Hey. Boom, 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 right? Sir. Hey. Okay, good. You all right? Take care. Feel free now. I'm fine. I'll change my eyes. Of course, when I turn from here at one, two. Again, it's the same action. I'm turning here. I flip him and I hit him here. You know that action with the foot. I turn here, one, two. You might want to do that once and so that you shoot a whoopie. One, two. See? Like one. That's why one, two is the Japanese the Chinese system. See? So, from here, one, one, two. Are you good? Here you get it. Run. That's found in this action here. And, and if you're doing this, some of the Chinese, some of the like stove resistance. One, this hand's here. This hand always comes across body this way. Right? You miss your action, this and that way. One, two. No, sir? Yeah. Wouldn't that also be uh, indicated at a lower level on the inner form and the punch? Of course. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. That, that's just repeated. That, that theme is repeated throughout the cut. This theme of, uh, theme of here is constantly repeated all through these, uh, these two forms. See, in the form, we start chunk Pat, would you start chunk one? Right. Start chunk one. <coughs> this part here? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's right in that. That's what's actually appearing first in the one form. Take on uh, Tung Su. That form is, a, uh, as far as we know, right now, almost 2,000 years old. There's no way for us to tell it's exactly it. But it's always been passed down with three living people learning it simultaneously, so the direction is straight. Two people are in the Kiskyu, but three or four masters living at the same time, the line is usually correct. Right? Right. It can make itself corrective. So if you're passing something down to students, make sure that Mr. Park's here, I'm here, you're here, and your student's here. So with the fourth of the line, uh, somebody can remember <laughs> that they'll change that a little bit. Just like when I start something out wrong, I'm often reminded that uh, <laughs> this is what I used to do it. Why did I change? Okay, back again, sir. I, I turn one. I turn after I turn. This is a three-quarter turn. Okay. Okay, two. Is that right? One, two, one. That's what it does. And you don't need any brains to know what that is, David. Come over. <laughs> He's attacking me. Stop! What else could it be? One, one, two, three. Exactly the form. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you watch it again. One. And more quickly. Like that. Okay, practice. Again, that's a reiteration. <laughs> <laughs> you just like that. There are times that it's that. One, two, three, one, one, two. All hot hands. There's not this way. So. If you want to get good to that, turn up a bunch of razor blades and pack it up. I know you're in the control wall. Hey, don't let out. We have a board upstairs with my power gun. I shot nails in it. You remember, when we used to pop that, we'd punch it, we'd kick it, right? All the time. You remember that, don't you? Mm -hmm. my, my nail board? Okay. It's upstairs sometimes. We'll find it. Nothing. Just going into what this is, as you know, except from here, I'm the last one I get from here, and this technique here now becomes different. This technique here, when I'm moving, becomes one, two. It becomes right here, it becomes a poke. So this technique, I'm here, I just go one, two. 
You're going to see, now this is the one I actually covered. Remember before we were doing the technique of highly fed punch. Right? So when I'm coming from here, same thing. One, two. This presents itself in this cup. See, where before we were doing like the highly fed cover punch, this form presents itself. One, two. That way. Now, for my hands, I bring my hand in this way to level my fingers. Now let's see, when people cross their fingers, do all kinds of things like this. To level my fingers, I bring it this way, which is an option hand. When I drive, I'll go this way nice. with the technique. And when I've dropped people with this, it's quite successful. So if I'm tacking, it's one, two. Okay, you can hit with one finger. Now I have a strong one finger. Yes. Okay, watch. <laughs> or you can do this way, or this way. But the best way is probably the finger. So I'm tacking again. One, two. Nice. Now, since that won't take it, the point is one, and I step in, and I'm here. I, when I step in, lose my body here to the side, and I'm like this. So again, this is front turn one, and where you normally would fold, instead of folding, I'm bringing the hand down and stepping in, and hitting right here, right there. Okay? I, if I go this way, there's one angle, but if I step in, I'm on the outside on the angle. So it's really important that when you do these techniques, this one here that you step in, because that gives you another angular technique. Right. No matter what, the angle is here, this angle is here. Right. So there's a big difference, see? One and two. This is part of the theory of angular attachment. So when you're doing this technique with David here, say for example, I'm going one, one, and then one, two. If you can't get away, then you can do what you did with him on one, two, by stutter step. Okay, go. Okay. Okay. Another part of the form is this way. One, two, okay. Now let's practice that a little bit and see if we can get some sense out of that. Okay, let's go. Hey, hey. Behind me. Two, one. Good. 
that. Okay, now this time we make everything short and hard. Okay. Now, from here. One. Ah. No, I didn't do that. I thought so. Don't you put your foot down or I put it down. Okay. Okay. All right. One. Two. Punches that weight. Watch my waist. Set down when I feel like it. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Again. One. One. Two. One. Two. One. Okay. Next. Again. Right. See, 
I'm from here. Do you see? Well, controlling my knee. Bring it down when I want to. Bring the knee back. Bring it back to here. Don't bring it back to here. The knee goes out. One. Okay. Last time I knocked him out about on this, so he didn't know that happy with this one. Okay. We're standing here. And he punches me from here. I grab him this way. And I grab from here. Watch the sun. And I get here. Just boom. And it's roughly behind the ear. And then, right, if I want to from here, continue action in one, two. And we move. So that's the action again, very basic. One, one, and so. Okay. Now if I if I'm stepping forward, I can again have his hand one, two. And I hit him until he comes up. There's the use of the knees. Watch it once more. One. One, two, stop! Watch my waist. Boom. Watch it once more. One, one, stop! Stop! That's that part of the form. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. You got to be careful. You're very nice. There you go. <laughs> See? One, and then boom. Uh, I got to eat lunch with us today. I bumped him with a two inch plank. Broke his face, broke his cheekbone, he still blew it out like that and passed out. And uh, they're really dangerous these punches under night. So when he grabs my arm, even this way, I can grab from here and drive. And then the body circles this way. That's why the waist is turned. Okay, hey, one, two, three. Now watch. Let me make this complexion for you. One, one, two, one. Two, right? One, two. So actually, this stuff doesn't have to be in line. Uh, I think if you guys remember, which you probably don't, Mr. Sakamukai right there pointed that out. He was doing this way. One, two, right? off the side. So you can drift either way on the techniques. You don't, it's not a straight line. So from this action, one, two, one, two, I hit and I punch. Now I'm ready for this action over here. Again. Here. Okay. So this is where the continuing action takes place. Okay. Okay. Because of a, you know, Chun Kwan constantly reverses itself. So, okay. You know, so Chun Kwan. Continue. Okay. 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 Right? So the system. Keep testing. One, two, and I grab from here. Watch me hit it. Now watch my hand. One, two. One, two. Just like this. One, two. Okay? After I hit, one, two. This way. Okay. Now remember. That's kind of action. Don't try to get work. It's just like that. I'm working with Michael Duncan. Okay. One, two. See, watch. One. Better than your head, huh? Go ahead.
and beware of a guy holding pens and clipboards and crap in his hands. It's just as easy to wham and hit the guy with a book in the head. The ketchup bottles work fine. One bottle. They work just dandy. And ashtrays do too. And tomorrow somebody will bring me in a spoon and they brought in a pumpkin. I'll show you some magic pumpkin spoon techniques. I want to make you get the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Now we do want you to get home tonight because we have a lot of stuff to do at the, uh, the bank tonight. And you know it's at the Tangiers. Everybody know where the Tangiers is? No, sir. Okay, they're from Main Street and Market Street. You know where that is? Main and Market. Yeah, I don't know where Market is. Well, you know where the hotel, you know after you is. Yeah. Going that way, the next major road that way is called Main Street. The big major road is Main Street. It's on a roughly, uh, what, 250 or what, 400? It's about one mile. One mile. 555 West mile. Market. It's a big place. So it's about approximately a, a half a mile from the center, uh, from Main Street, up on Market Street, that way. Now, if you get off on the inner belt, we'll dump you right on Market. But Market Street is the main uh, is the main drag. There's two streets, Main Street here, and Market crosses that. Okay, so if you get off the center of that, uh, in the expressway, go that way until you get to, to Main Street, that way until you get to Main Street and go left. And the University of Akron, it lies south, as it drives northwest from the University of Akron, about two What's the name of the exit? The Tangiers. No, the exit. Michael, which way are you coming down from? Uh, probably come from 8. See me afterwards, I'll tell you. You're heading to 77 South and North, there's a Main Street exit. Yeah, yeah. so he can show you how to know. If you're coming from, from north, just take 18. It'll take you a little longer, but as soon as you get 18, that's what you're going Okay, now let me tell you something about this so you understand. We were teaching this some time ago. We had a kid, you remember, remember him? Took the boy's eye out. You remember that? We had a car company called Falls Blood. He had a kid. He was training in the other dojo. So we could teach him these techniques. And these are techniques that are not to be done in the dojo. And if you do them to anybody, you do them on your own. These are techniques that save your life and your family. They're not done for other people. If you back fist people or backhand their face, that's probably okay. But the eyes are no-no. We don't allow that. And uh, if you happen to have a pencil in your hand and you slap somebody down that way, that's their problem. But you guys be careful with this stuff. It's not a joke. And the Keto Federation is really careful. All kinds of uh, liability things. And we watch this all the time. So I'm telling you right now, if you teach this to your students, and students do it to somebody, you're li liable by vicarious liability. You go really be careful who you teach this to and how they apply it. It's not right at that. Really, really, really careful. This is a great deal of a devastation. It's a blindness that you can't see. And you go whack in the head, your eyes are turned into like plums. I see people slap this up and they can't see. They just close their eyes up about maybe 60 seconds, your eyes go plump like that. That all being said, this is part of the form, and it changes the disposition of the Hian Ka. All the Hian forms have are uh, like little exercises that find parallel parts of the more advanced form. So sometimes, it's really easy to go through these eons, which are done by almost every system, and, uh, and make the corrections, and then it opens your eyes to the high kata. Now this, today, I was watching every, almost everybody was doing low form. Let's all make that tomorrow, and to do some high kata, because the low form is uh, outside of the understanding of kink, is pretty much useless. Some of the students out there are doing high form, but I, don't, uh, I suppose you know the difference, right? Well, I'll just tell them here. Okay. Remember, you're good, you blush. Hi. <laughs> yes, question. Question. No, question. No, no. Question. 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 Tell them where it stands here. Okay, yes, question. This is the time you're supposed to have a brilliant question. Yes. Yes. I'm drawing somebody down. You can't draw them down with you unless you have a real stable stance going that direction to draw. That's the trouble. If you want to really pull something, you have to prepare both feet. Well, you can't pull the feet close together. You have to spin your feet to the pull. Right. And that, that's the reason for the deep stances. Right. And uh, they're not to be, uh, the stances are overly deep in karate people. They're so deep that they turn the foot away from the forward. And so what happens, uh, they say they can't do them any other way because the ankles are stiff. And they're stiff because they can't do them any other way. It's like that catch 22. You can't do it in any other way because you've got stiff ankles, but the reason you've got stiff ankles is because they haven't done it any other way. Can you repeat that? 
No, sir. Yes. Uh, is, I'm going to ask you, is that a direct teacher of Toyama? Uh, what? Is uh, Anko Otosu Anaku? a direct teacher of Toyama? Uh, Anko Otosu, yes. yes. He was also a direct teacher of several people, but it's interesting because he, he was a student. Of, yes. He was a student of uh, Bushi Nachimura and a student of. Uh, uh, but we'll go ahead. Do you want to give it uh, to me since you're on the. Our historian, who he had all kinds of teachers, Devon and Conroy Higashiyama. Go ahead, give him a tell who his student was. Tosu is a student of? Well, of uh, Tosu, who were his teachers? Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Okay, it was uh, Conroy Higashiyama uh, and Tosu uh, uh, Chibana, and all these people were, uh, were teachers of him, but he was uh, less contemporary than they were. Uh, well, I thought uh, Chibana actually was uh, under him. Under him. I know, but he still was one of the instructors and less of the things. Those days are just much like a, uh, who's older than me? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, it's like I'm learning something from you, and actually I'm a senior too, but I'm still learning. I feel like James Muir had gold in my belt. What? I feel like James Muir had gold in my belt. Yeah, yeah, same kind of thing, same, same situation. And uh, see, Atosu was an interesting guy, and so to, uh, Toyama was, uh, but he was from Bushi Matsumura. Bushi, and when you look at his jo dojo brothers, you have a really big problem. He wasn't only taught by Bushi Matsumura. See, back that time you had the uh, 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 and the Chukotobi, and you had all those people who were doing things within that area. So in those days, it's perhaps incorrect to say teacher. In this essence, you could say he learned this, learned from that, he learned this from the other things. See? But I would say that would be safe to say. His major instructor of note was uh, Bushi Matsumura or something Matsumura. Right? Yeah, I would say that there was a primary instructor like Matsumura, but there's like mentorships with the other individuals. Yeah, you have all kinds of yeah. them. Also, you have another individual that's not listed up here that would uh, influence Toyama and Funakoshi as a Zato. Yes. But yeah, Anko is Zato. Anko is Zato. Yeah, Matt, you trained with his grandson, so you won't I, grand, I trained with his grandson. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he was mostly a swordman, though, I understood that. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Now, a good question. When, when the uh, penal forms say, do our punch by doing it this way, get, get an actual gun that, that, that punches them. No, that's true. The penal forms are in there exercise. That's all forms are exercise. There, no form is actual combat. And uh, part of the forms in, in doing the form, as uh, you find out, there's a vast difference between what the form is really and, and the practice of an exercise. And part of the forms are the balance of the body. Either make sure the body balance muscular structure is all right. They're not actually functional. Some of the more advanced forms can be functional, like Kung Fu and Basai, if it's done correctly, can be functional. Uh, generally, they're not, right? Because they've been changed in the way as the students like. For example, if I tell a story to uh, a complex story to the kids, and they don't laugh, I'll change a few things, and the kids will laugh. And so gradually, an adult here, you know, pick up the changed story as the story, and it passes on. That. So a lot of the teaching is a thing that has been uh, morphed by the uh, way the students understand. And, and unfortunately, that's brought into the actual self-defense techniques. Yes, it is. The self-defense techniques have flown out the window. See, they don't know what self-defense is. They really don't know what self-defense is. Self-defense is a really, really brutal, bloody, miserable mess. And it's not fun at all. If you ever ran with bike games like it or something like that, the fight said is it's not, not even slice but cute. Guys, you really get hurt with blood all over the place. You know, if I go to Stoney Gleason, you know, the guy, uh, every guy got not an acting cop or somebody knocked on his door, with a bam shot, the guy killed him through the door. That's pretty strong self defense, wouldn't you say? Right. He's burned a lot of time in the, in the pen, yes. Oh, okay, no, I agree with you completely. Rick? Is the teaching of forms, can it be said that the teaching of forms is the teaching of coordinated movement? Yes, it is. And you can say uh, forms are for your life. They're a method of enhancing your life, of coordinating things, and of bringing yourself together in your life. They're wonderful for your life. Uh, yes. But we can also say uh, learning forms is a form of, of building a tool chest of techniques to draw upon in a combat situation. Yes, but that doesn't mean that, see, that you're getting tricky with that because the uh, uh, doing forms won't make you fire. I agree. We, we understand that, but, uh, but a person that... Uh, the fight, the fights after uh, learning forms is by far better. Yeah, but uh, 
to study form without Munkai is really not studying the form. Is I it? agree. Okay. No, I agree with that. That's why the swarms without Munkai are just like a, um, a saying a, a, a big onion ape, they've got big four, five, five, six, nine from Canada, Mexico, Copa, North America, <coughs> I, I pronounced a whole lot of words, but they had absolutely no meaning. Meaningless. Meaningless stuff. You get the stuff that has absolutely no meaning. And oddly enough, after a while, you get a sense for that. Initially, and you won't. Initially, you won't be able to understand it. Eventually, you get a sense of that. It doesn't feel right. It feels like bad. Did you ever eat something in a restaurant and right in the middle of eating and say, gee, this is not good for me? And you put it aside. And after a while, you're discriminatory about that. And after hearing music, you know, and you drive down the street to turn stations, you don't know why you did, but it just isn't what you wanted. Sorry? Uh, when you're doing your punches, I know this is similar to the Korean stabbing hand, sometimes the punch is preceding the step. When, you, when we're showing it to the students, how do you want us there's to do no that? Way. So e we can show it either way? Well, there's one where the, uh, uh, where the punch precedes the hand, another done at the same time, another where the foot precedes. A part of that's the rhythm of the form. And part of that's the rhythm. Sometimes when I'm stepping, I'm displacing something, and then I hit it when it's displaced. I'm creating an off-balancing situation, if you will. And other times, the guy's brought a firm balance line, just like a diving in with a sword to poke him before he can change his balance posture. If I want to get my bottom distance away and I want to hit him real fast, I'll move before he can move. And that means I can't shift and just balance it before it does, you see. But if he doesn't have an app, well, I guess I could say if I, if I want him to move him, then I'll move into him, and then punch him. And if I want him to stay where he is, I want to punch him without moving, then I'll punch him first and move in. And doing both of them at the same time is sort of a compromise. <laughs> yeah. The question, sir? Jed? Could we uh, at some point in the future possibly discuss the use of some of the smaller traditional weapons? Um, you, you said ash Yeah, they all fit with this stuff. Smaller traditional weapons all fit with this. We can talk about that tomorrow. <coughs> Carol? Patrick? <coughs> you yeah. I have one question. Uh, uh, Kata have a and all these uh, hand kata specifically have an Andrew sandwich which is set, set, set in twos and threes. Uh, besides the uh, uh, perhaps space constraints, would there be any purpose in doing that for teaching for the pedagogy of the kata, for the block of the kata, or for the application of the kata? Ending up right where you start from? Uh, no, not so much that, just it's in threes and twos. You have to step and punch, and it'll be one, two, three in the middle, step and punch, do something. To no, there's no two. significance to that at all, except that the uh, tradition has been the form to end up with a right side. Uh, defensive technique. Uh, the, that's what they tried to include in some kind of philosophy, but we know that really that isn't what happens. Right? You always uh, pretty much hit the weak side and turn to the strong side and uh, come up around. That's pretty much the, the, what happens. And so that's just pretty much his way of, uh, his way he wanted to put it together. And as far as ending up at the same place we started from, general chase forms uh, don't end up. You always end up in a different place. And Chen Chi, Do Sang, Nam, Ramon Ho, and all those end up in a different place. So the idea, after demonstrating that conclusively, they finally decided that uh, who wrote that story, you can't go home again. Is that Wolf? Thomas Wolf? Yeah. I was going to tell you, I know how you're getting four and threes, but if you really look at it, 